In this video, we're going to be going over the key differences between Spartan Race, Savage Race, and Tough Mudder, and we're starting right now. What's up everybody, Derek Rosansky here, your obstacle activist, and on this channel we do OCR gym reviews, gear reviews, tips and trick videos, and other OCR related content just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. With obstacle course racing, there are so many series that you can't even keep track of nowadays. That being said, there are three main ones that are really prevalent today. Savage Race, Spartan Race, and Tough Mudder. For whatever reason, once someone starts racing one of those series, they don't really branch out to other series. Although this is fine, every series has something totally different to offer and is a different experience from the other. In this video, we're gonna go over those main differences and kind of the racing style of those series. But first, I'm kind of hungry, so I'm gonna go get a snack. Be right back. Let's get back to the video. The first series that comes to mind when you tell somebody that you're doing an obstacle course race is probably Tough Mudder. So let's start there. Much better. Now when it comes to Tough Mudder, most people think of that as like the OG of obstacle course racing, and it kind of is. This is that obstacle course race that most people do for their first time and just really enjoy it and have fun. And because of that, most of their obstacles at Tough Mudder are just really fun obstacles. Tough Mudder is all about team building and team exercises. They don't care when you cross a finish line, just as long as you make it there. Although the obstacles of Tough Mudder can be really fun, they also play a mental game and try to scare you a little bit. For Tough Mudder, the obstacles aren't about wearing you down physically, but they're about wearing you down mentally. A lot of them are fear-based. Some of their obstacles, such as electric shock therapy, which is one of their most popular, it's at the finish line, you literally get shocked as you run through a bunch of electrical wires to the finish line. Other obstacles, such as King of Swingers and Kong, also kind of go with the mental game and kind of go with that fear factor of heights as well as water. Now that being said, Tough Mudder does definitely have a lot of obstacles to do with team exercises and team building. That is what they're all about. So they have obstacles such as the Block Nest Monster where you're gonna need multiple people to tip it over. They're also gonna have obstacles like Happy Ending where you're gonna need to stack person on top of person to get to the top. Now there are three different types of Tough Mudder distances. You have the original Tough Mudder Full, which is 10 miles. You have the Tough Mudder Half, which is six and then you have the Tough Mudder 5K, which is 3.1 miles. With each distance, you're gonna have less and less obstacles, but they usually keep the best round for each one of those. Now, it used to be that all the waves of Tough Mudder were just open and there weren't really, you know, competition or anything like that going on. That being said, though, at the end of 2017, they did come out with a new competitive wave. I haven't yet tried it. I do plan on doing my first one here in 2018, but until then, that's time for another video. Now, onto the biggest race globally. All right, next up, we've got Spartan Race. If you're talking to somebody who's done an obstacle course race, and they haven't done a Tough Mudder, odds are it's probably a Spartan race. Now unlike Tough Mudder, they don't really play the mental game with you. They play the physical game. All their obstacles are designed and created to break you down physically and then mentally. Instead of having crazy, you know, really out there obstacles, Spartan race uses the terrain as the number one obstacle in their race. They're in mountainous regions, very hilly, very rocky, and just very difficult to navigate. If the terrain wasn't hard enough for you to begin with, they give you a lot of obstacles that are strength-based, such as the Bucket Brigade, the sandbag carry and the plate drag. Most of these things are on those mountains which just make it that much harder for you to do. After doing so much of this time and time again, it really wears you down, not physically, but then it eventually breaks you mentally as well, which is Spartan's ultimate goal. Now, although Spartan's definitely more so geared toward physically breaking you down, they do break you down mentally over time as well. The way they do that is by giving you penalties for failing obstacles. You gotta do 30 burpees. Now, 30 burpees doesn't seem too bad, but after you've already you know, ran four or five miles, did three heavy carries, you know, four other obstacles, maybe a couple burpees along the way. Those 30 burpees are gonna be really, really tiring and take a lot out of you. It's definitely not something you're gonna wanna do if you fail an obstacle. The biggest obstacle that they use the spear on is probably the spear throw. I say this because I believe 80 to 90% of people don't make this throw. This is definitely the burpee killer when it comes to Spartan Race. Now, Spartan Race is a little more complicated when it comes to its wave times and starts. There are three different categories. You have the elites, which have to complete all obstacles. If they don't complete the obstacle, they must do the mandatory 30 burpees. If you do any less, you are penalized and or 
DQ'd. The elites race for a cash prize and a spot on the podium. Now one step down from the elites is the age group category. Difference between the age groups and elites isn't a whole lot other than you aren't racing for a cash prize. You're just racing for that podium spot. That being said, you're still racing to the same standards as the elites and must do all burpees for any uncompleted obstacle. You do only get one try for those obstacles. Lastly, you have the open wave class for Spartan. These are typically your first timers and those people who are just going out to have fun and basically be a weekend warrior. If you wanna have the integrity to do all your 30 burpees, go ahead and do them. If not, no one's really gonna hound you on it. Unless you're in a Spartan Facebook group, you do have four different distances when it comes to Spartan. You have the sprint, which is three to five miles, the super, which is eight to 10, the beast, which is 13 plus, and then the ultra beast, which is 30 plus. Depending on your distance, you're gonna have more obstacles. That's kind of a given. Both each added distance, those obstacles are gonna be a little more challenging, the main one being the rig. For a sprint, the difficulty is gonna be pretty easy. With the super, it's gonna be a little more challenging. And with the beast, it's gonna be a lot more challenging. Spartan's key line is, you'll know at the finish line. And honestly, you will. This is definitely a race that's gonna be very physically and mentally demanding for you. They're gonna try and break you down any which way that they can until there's just nothing left to give. All right, so that covers Spartan Race. Last but not least, we have my favorite of all time. Savage Race. Full disclosure, this is my favorite series of all time, so there may be a little bit of bias here, but hey, I'm not perfect. So when it comes to Savage Race, they're kind of like Tough Mudder in that they use a lot of mentally challenging obstacles. Most of their obstacles are over water, they involve heights, and they kind of just mess with you a little bit. Where Spartan Race obstacles are very strength-based and more physically demanding, Savage Race is a lot more based on agility and grip strength. A couple of these examples are Wheel World, the Savage Rig, Sawtooth, and Twirly Bird. These obstacles you can't really muscle through. They take a lot more finesse and a lot more technique, which makes them a little bit more challenging in my opinion. Plus, if you like Ninja Warrior and like to do that type of stuff, this is right up your alley. So I'm just gonna get it out of the way and say it now. Bands over burpees. Now you've probably heard a lot of people say bands over burpees or have seen that before. Uh, maybe you're not sure what it means. Basically, whereas Spartan has to do burpees if you fail an obstacle, Savage Race will take a band just like this one here. Focus. Whatever, close enough. You'll take this band here and you have as many tries as you want to do that obstacle. If you can't complete it, you then have to give up your band to that volunteer at that obstacle. If you give up your band, you can still finish the race and get a t-shirt and medal, but you're not eligible for cash prizes. Now there are two types of waves in Savage Race. You have the pro wave, which is kind of like the elites in Spartan, and then you have the open class. The main difference between a pro wave in Savage Race and an elite wave in Spartan Race are the obstacles themselves as well as the attempts you get to do them. In Spartan Race, you get one try at the obstacles. No redos, no mulligans. You fail, you do your 30 burpees. In Savage Race, you get as many tries as you want to complete the obstacle until you either A, give up, or B, complete it and move on. If you don't complete it, however, you do have to give up your band. Now, the reason why I like the Pro Wave more in Savage Race versus the Elite Wave in a Spartan is that it actually means something more to be in that Pro Wave. The reason why I say this is that if you're in a Pro or an Elite Wave, you should be able to do all those obstacles. If you're in Spartan and you fail an obstacle, you can just keep doing your 30 burpees and move on never have to worry about ever completing that obstacle. Whereas if you're with Savage Race, you either can do that obstacle or you can't. There is no in-between. But again, that's kind of getting into my bias, so maybe you should just ignore that. Now, Pro Wave aside, you do also have an open wave just like any other series. This wave can be totally for fun. You can take it serious. It's completely up to you. There's no penalty if you don't complete an obstacle. No one's gonna rag on you, no matter what Facebook group you're in. This race is totally what you want it to be. It can be super competitive or super fun. Now there used to be only one type of Savage Race that was six or seven miles and all their usual obstacles. But this year in 2018, they have a Savage Blitz. I'm probably gonna mess this up, so I'm just gonna refer to my uh, handy dandy poster here that Savage Race so kindly sent me. So according to this, the Blitz is across three different miles and has 15 to 20 obstacles in it. It looks like it's their best obstacles like Savage Rig, their new ones like Holy Sheet, Battering Ram, their usuals like Colossus Slide and Wheel World and it kind of looks like a good time. Very short, fast paced, fun course. We're done with that. Now, the tagline for Savage Race is the best obstacles and the perfect distance. And honestly, it's pretty true. They have some of the most innovative, but also most challenging obstacles, but also throw in a little bit of fun in there as well. Now that that's done, let's get back to being a little bit less biased. All right, that's much better. So there you have it guys. Those are the main differences between those three different race series. Now obviously I didn't go in you know, super in depth with this, but if you'd like me to, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. So, to sum up, you have Tough Mudder, which is very team-based, you know, very team-focused, and just a lot of fun, very innovative obstacles. Although I have yet to do the competitive wave, it's something I'm really looking forward to do this year, and I'll definitely let you know what I think once I do one. Spartan Race, on the other hand, has a little bit of everything. 
They have everything from short distance to ultra distances, from beginner to elite, and pretty much everything in between. That being said, they're very strength-based, very physically demanding obstacles, and you'll definitely know at the finish line that you've completed your first Spartan race. And then we have Savage Race. Savage Race is a good distance, about six miles or three miles if you wanna do the blitz. They have both fun and challenging obstacles that are very innovative and changing almost every year. Hopefully you learned a little bit from this video. Maybe you've already run all these races, you didn't learn anything, but at the very least, you can now say you know my favorite series is Savage Race. Don't tell Spartan. Oh, one more thing. If you saw this in the video, it's not a tattoo. This has to do with my shoulder recovery. It's kind of like KT tape, but it's dynamic tape. So no, I did not get a very bad travel tattoo. Thanks.